how do you, when you're anticipating, okay, this patient might have external valve collapse after septoplasty, are you looking, because when you're looking at them breathe pre-op, they're not moving air through that side, so they're probably not going to pinch. Are you looking at the contralateral side and say, oh, that side, you know, does, you know, come in and pinch a little bit, maybe? Like, what are some, some signs that to tell you, okay, this, this person is at risk? I'll look at the other side. And if that, you know, one is that side can just be hyperactive and weakened in general. And it doesn't necessarily mean that the, the other side, the obstructed side is going to collapse too. Uh, but then I just look at the kind of the, the structure, the orientation. So if somebody's got cephalically oriented cartilages, that's like a sure tail sign. Like if you think about it, if your cartilages are pointing up towards the inside of your eyes, the medial canthal area, like they're just not providing the sidewall structure and support that they need. So Again, mapping out their anatomy is probably uh, is is just as important to understand if they're going to have external valve collapse after a septoplasty, and then all the other stuff like the intrinsic cartilage strength and you know, yeah, the stuff we talked about. Of course, about. yeah, and I'm I'm sure since you do and have done so much rhinoplasty that you know you're just thinking when you look at the nose, you're kind of already thinking about what you know what is the what is that structural framework look like underneath the skin because right. you know that's what you do so. Yeah, I mean, uh, rhinoplasty is, it's a very, it's, uh, I enjoy doing rhinoplasty a lot. And in a lot of ways, it's much, much tougher than like a free flap or, you know, some of these bigger, more, you know, tertiary cases. Um, because, you know, one is the aesthetic stuff of it, but even from the functional standpoint, like I said, it's like playing chess. You just have to kind of anticipate uh, what's going on in that nose. And it's fun because it's like, it's an anatomical question. And, you know, we're surgeons, you know, we like anatomy. Uh, so it's kind of like, okay, well, you know, you're playing this game with this nose and you're, you know, trying to figure out how it's going to behave. And that's why I really like rhinoplasty. It's a different, you know, type of procedure or surgery than some of the other surgeries that I do. And when we're talking about septoplasty being sort of a risk factor, not necessarily a risk factor, but that if you don't address the valve, I would understand that we're probably talking about more of the caudal, right? The caudal septal deviation, not necessarily the bony septal septal deviation in the back. Well, I'll see in both times. Uh, so, you know, revision septoplasty in general, I see a lot of people with caudal septal deflections that just don't get addressed at the time of surgery. So when they come in, they're like, I had a septoplasty and I couldn't breathe. And I always ask them like, all right, well, one, was it the same side before surgery that you couldn't breathe in? Or is it the other side? Did you have any relief when the splints came out? And then I look at them and usually a lot of times for revision septoplasty, you'll see these patients with like a caudal septal deflection that just wasn't touched. They, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's a difficult place to address, you know, if you're not comfortable with the caudal septum, you know, it impacts the tip. There's like a lot going on, you know, yeah, your premaxillary spine, you know, there could be a fracture at the anterior septal angle, but a lot of surgeons just aren't comfortable with the caudal septum in general. But when it comes to, you know, septoplasty and external valve collapse after, I would say it's definitely in the cartilage septum, either mid septum, caudal septum. Uh, I don't necessarily see it with people that have had bony septal deflections. That's a tough thing to correlate because, like I said, a lot of people are coming in and I don't necessarily know what their deviated septum looked like when they went to their other surgeon and had their first surgery. But caudal septal deflection, I'll tell you, definitely will correlate. But that's just, you know, in general, it doesn't even have to do with external valves. It's just, you know, it didn't, it didn't resolve with the first septoplasty because the first septoplasty didn't address that area. 